So today I'm going to be reviewing the Lenovo Tab P11 Gen 2, and this is an Android tablet that is very interesting for the money because I got it right around $200, and this is a tablet with a 120 hertz screen. But is it really worth the money? Is it a decent Android tablet? And how good is it for your everyday stuff? Well, I'm going to let you know in this full review. So with all that being said, let's get right into it. So Lenovo has made a lot of Android tablets lately, but honestly, I haven't heard a lot about them. A lot of people are talking about Samsung tablets, they talk about iPads, but Lenovo has been making a lot of good mid-range tablets and even lower-end tablets recently, and they haven't really gotten the shine they deserve. Yes, there are some flaws with them, and you'll see that in this review, there are some flaws with this tablet, but overall, the Lenovo P11, I really think the Gen 2 specifically has a lot to highlight that we don't really see in many tablets. For one, this tablet does have a 120 hertz display, and that is insane when you think about the price I paid. Yes, this does retail at $270. You will see it at your local Best Buy store for that, but you can get it for even cheaper when you see a lot of sales. And Lenovo specifically on their website, especially in holiday seasons, especially even after the holiday seasons, I'm sure you're going to see this tablet go on sale, and I was seeing this tablet under $200 and it was $240 if you wanted to get it with the keyboard and with the accessories. Samsung often charges around $150 or $200 for their keyboards, but this keyboard cover, in my opinion, is even better than the keyboard cover that you would get from the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9. To get an Android tablet with a keyboard, with a pin, and to get that for under $300 with all of those accessories, that could be a really good deal if you find it on sale. So yes, I do want to compare this to other tablets out there and the whole tablet landscape to really see if this tablet is worth it. But first, we really need to look into details and see how good this tablet is. And to do that, I want to first start by looking at the design. So if you look at the design of this tablet, you're going to see what you see on almost any tablet around two or $300. You're going to see a nice aluminum back here. You do have a unique texture up here. I'm not really sure what material this is, but it does feel like a cool little textured material up top. Top. Now, if you look at the top, you're also going to see a micro SD card slot. Of course, that is very, very nice to see. Now, you do not get a fingerprint sensor anywhere on this device, but you will have your power button here and two speakers on one side of the tablet. And on the other side, you're going to have two speakers, a USB-C port, and a headphone jack. And that's a big deal if that's something you've been looking for in a tablet. But you're not going to see anything that's going to be great for actually unlocking your tablet. Now, this tablet does have face unlock but the face unlock with my experience with it, it hasn't been great. It was better than the face unlock on the Lenovo Tab P11 Pro Gen 2. For some reason, even though this isn't a Pro tablet, the face unlock did work a little bit better for me, but it still wasn't great. It only worked about 50% of the time, maybe 60% of the time. You might have better luck than me. Now, if you look at other things, of course, you are going to see bezels across the tablet on the front of the device. You're going to see the camera right there in the middle. The camera is okay. It's not something to write home about, but it is going to be okay for some video calls. And if you look here at the bottom of the tablet, you will see these pins. And these pins do actually connect with the keyboard. Again, if you do want to spend a little bit of extra money, it's not always available at Best Buy, for example, but if you go to Lenovo's website, I do have links in the description. They do often have sales on this, and they do actually have a keyboard combo that does come with a pin. And if you actually look at that, you're going to find that this keyboard, it's honestly one of my favorite keyboards that I've really gotten with any Android tablet. But I was just surprised at how good the travel was. I was surprised at how sturdy this was. It does have a nice leather feel on the back of it. And when you look at the back of this case part, I love how it's detachable, just like the Tab S9 keyboard cover, where if you don't want to use the keyboard, you just detach it from the bottom, and you still have this nice case. And the cool thing about the case is it actually protects your device. So a lot of keyboard covers, they don't have cases 
cases that have bumpers, but this actually has bumpers on the front of the device, so you can actually protect your screen. If you do drop your tablet on the front, for example, maybe you don't have your keyboard cover attached, that's really, really nice. You also have a kickstand, of course, that is very, very good. A nice leather feel on the back of this. So I really, really do like the keyboard cover. Again, I would say it's one of my favorite keyboard covers out of any tablet. I would say it's not as good as something like the Tab S9 Ultra, but only because that keyboard cover is backlit. If I had a bigger version of this that was backlit, it would definitely be my favorite keyboard cover. Now it does also come with the pin in the box as well. It's nice that you get that precision pin. So you do get a nice stylus experience and the fact that you do get 120 Hertz on the screen, it does mean things are gonna be fairly smooth as far as the stylus. But I'm not a big artist, so you're not gonna get much out of me as far as the stylus. The point is it does work very well. Now if you're looking for this tablet to have a bunch of compromises, don't worry, there are some compromises and if you're out there and you care about Android tablets and you really like higher end Android tablets, this probably won't be the tablet for you because you are gonna get a little bit of slower performance out of it. And the display here is not an AMOLED display. So if you look at the Lenovo Tab P11 Pro Gen 2, that tablet is just a little bit higher in price and you do get an AMOLED display with it and you also get better performance. With this, you get an 11.5 inch screen and it does look really nice, don't get me wrong. Like it has a 2000 by 1200 resolution. Now I was blown away by the fact that this tablet came with a 120 hertz screen because if you look at Apple devices for example for $800 they still can't give you 120 Hertz in their iPhone 15s for example and I've heard the iPhone 16 might even have a 60 Hertz display so the fact that we get a 120 Hertz display here I am just super super impressed by that and when you scroll around the menus on this tablet and when you just scroll around in general everything does feel very very smooth and it looks very good too now it's not AMOLED so so again, if you are someone with higher expectations from your tablets, if you are used to something like the Tab S6, or maybe you're used to something like the Tab S8 Plus or the Tab S9, yes, those devices have AMOLED displays, maybe even the P11 Pro Gen 2. All of those devices will look a little bit better and the colors will be a little more accurate. But some people don't like AMOLED displays. And if you look at this display here, it still looks very, very nice. When I'm watching YouTube, when I am watching entertainment, I do still think the display is good. If you're looking at other displays with 720p screens and things like that, yeah, those displays aren't great, but when you get to a display that's like a 2K display, something like that, you're gonna have a really good experience. And honestly, I did have a good experience with the screen, but there's just, a hint of compromise if you do care about AMOLED. Now, if you look at performance, I would say that is the biggest hit on this tablet. If you compare it to something like a Galaxy Tab A8, that tablet, yeah, this is gonna be faster than that. Like this tablet with the 120 hertz screen, even the processor in it, it's gonna be faster than the Unisoc processor you get in the Tab A8. And if you're looking at something like the Tab A7 Lite or some of those slower Android tablets that are out there, then sure, this will be a little bit faster than those. But if you're looking at the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, the 2022 version, I think that will be a little faster than this. If you look at a lot of other Android tablets out there, like the P11 Pro Gen 2, if you look at other devices like the Tab S7 FE, there's a lot of devices out there that are going to be a little bit quicker than this. I noticed when I was scrolling around, sure, everything seemed fairly smooth. If I was doing one or two things at a time, yes, this would be decently fast. And in my opinion, it was again, faster than those lower end Android tablets out there. But if you go beyond that to like those mid range Android tablets, this was actually fairly sluggish if you compare it to the Google Pixel tablet tablet or the OnePlus pad, if you compare it to even the P11 Pro Gen 2, which is just a little bit higher in price, that will get you more performance. It's got four gigabytes of RAM in the base model. It can get up to six gigabytes. And I forgot to even mention the processor. It is a Helio G99 processor from MediaTek. So if you are someone who really, really cares about really good performance, if you're someone who wants to be able to flip through three, four, five, six, seven, eight apps very, very quickly, this tablet might not be 
be for you, but don't let that get you away from this tablet if you're someone who just wants a tablet for the basics. If you're someone who just wants something really nice to look at, you want a really nice display, you want to be able to smoothly scroll through your tablet, maybe you want a nice typing experience on a keyboard, and maybe you're someone who just wants to do one or two things occasionally, you don't really do a lot of productive work, I really think this tablet would be really, really good for you. A lot of people are only looking to scroll the news occasionally or open up YouTube or open up some streaming apps. This tablet is gonna be perfect for that. And it's gonna be a lot better than those other Android tablets that you might be looking at around 100 to $150 or even $200 if you look at something like the Tab A8. This is gonna be better than that. And if you spend a little bit more, you could even get a keyboard with it and a pen with it and all of those things. So I think that this tablet is really geared for those people who are really thinking about something like a Samsung Tab A8. And maybe you see this device on sale and you see it competing against that. I think this is gonna be terrific. And even if you compare it to the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, for example, that tablet might have a little bit of a better processor in it, but it does not have a 120 hertz display. So you might actually prefer this. In fact, I really like the screen a lot more on this than the Tab S6 Lite. So if you look at this display, you look at the resolution, it looks a little bit better than the S6 Lite. You have a 120 hertz display and you look at the accessories. Maybe you decide to get the bundle with the pin and with the keyboard cover. That might be a lot more appealing to you than the S6 Lite. So I think this is really a great competitor with those two Samsung tablets. And I think this tablet fits right in, but it's not going to be for those people who want that extra step in performance. If you are someone who wants that, you might wanna step up to something like the Lenovo Tab P11 Pro Gen 2. That tablet did come out about a little over a year ago now, but now it has Android 13 and that tablet is fairly smooth. Outside of not having good face unlock, the P11 Pro Gen 2 is honestly one of the best values out there because for a little over 300 bucks, you could get an AMOLED display, you could get really good performance, and I'd say the only reason it's not really super pricey is because, well, it has a MediaTek processor, and a lot of people don't like MediaTek, but still that processor is very, very fast in that tablet, and you will get a little bit of a better display compared to this. But that tablet, it does have worse face unlock, and that tablet also is a little pricier, and you're gonna struggle to find accessories for it. I was having a terrible time finding accessories for the P11 Pro Gen 2. And with this, you could find a lot of good accessory bundles with the keyboard, with the stylus, and a lot of times you could find these for like $100 less than the P11 Pro Gen 2. And you could find it for a similar price to something like the S6 Lite or the Galaxy Tab A8. And for that reason alone, I think this tablet is a really nice Android tablet. Like it's a 7,700 milliamp battery, which is actually pretty darn good. So you don't get the brightest screen in the world. It's 400 nits of brightness, but I think that's more than good enough for me. You don't get AMOLED from this tablet, and the performance can be a little bit sluggish depending on what you're doing. But if you are someone who's just looking for a basic Android experience, this is gonna be a really solid option. I don't expect a lot of software updates from it, and again, there are some minor compromises, but I think Lenovo, if you compare them to Samsung, they typically give you a better bang for your buck when you're looking at hardware. They give you better things like a 120 hertz screen for cheaper, or they give you a little bit of better performance for the same money. And here they're giving you, if you find the bundle with the accessories, they're gonna give you a really great keyboard cover and a good pin for a reasonable price. So overall, I would say I would highly recommend this tablet to the right people if you are someone who is looking for an Android tablet around two to $300. Hopefully this review has helped you out because I know it's really tough in this Android market. There are not a lot of people that talk about budget Android tablets out there. It is ridiculous because everyone has their mind in the sky at $1,000 and there's not a lot of people thinking about, well, people like you and me who just can't afford probably a lot of that stuff. And if you can't afford it, well, hey, that's good, but maybe you still wanna save some money. So hopefully this has helped you with that. Please use links in the description if you are interested in that, because that does help to support my channel. It does help my channel to continue to thrive and grow, especially in this crazy holiday season where things are crazy expensive. And also another way to support me is to watch some extra content on the side. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you have a terrific day and I really hope you enjoy your week.